given. Let us discuss this example. In this example, we have function f and we have to prove that this function is not Riemann integrable on closed interval AB. See in this diagram I have shown we have a closed interval AB function f is defined on closed interval AB. Let us try to understand the definition of f first. What we have function f has two values 0 or 1 okay. If x belongs to this set q means set of rational numbers okay. Rational numbers intersection closed interval AB that means all rational numbers which lies between a and b. So for rational numbers value of function is 0 okay. So let me show here. So for rational numbers value of function is 0 like this. See I have shown their dotted line. I have drawn dotted line since you know that density theorem says there are irrational numbers between any two rationals and there are rational numbers between any two irrational. So that's why for rational only we have 0 and for irrational that means q minus closed interval a b other than rational that means irrational. For irrational numbers we have value 1. So for irrationals, we will have one this one, okay, like this. So yes, so one and zero, only these two values function has, okay. Let us go further. We have to prove that function is not Riemann integrable. Very simple technique we have. Simply we have to prove that upper integral is not equal to lower integral. First of all, we will find the value of upper integral. Let us take one partition first. Let P is equal to starting point is A x0, x1, x2 and so on xn last point which is equal to b, b partition of closed interval ab, partition of closed interval ab. Let me show it here, okay. So simply I will show only four partitions here, see this four partitions we have, this is x0, this one will be x1, x2, x3 and b is equal to x4. So we have a partition and let me mention here delta xi you are familiar with that delta x is equal to what xi minus xi minus 1 for all i running from 1 to n right. So delta xi gives the length of each sub interval okay. Let us go further after that we define capital mi okay let uh, let uh, see now I will mention capital mi so you are familiar with a definition okay. So definition of capital M I supremum of f of x where x lies in x i minus 1 and x i okay. That means for each sub interval we find supremum that is nothing but capital M I. This is true for for all i running from 1 to n. Let us find its value. See function has only two values in each sub interval function has only two values. 0 and 1 but we are interested in supremum maximum value so obviously the answer will be 1 okay so its maximum value is 1 since in each sub interval it has either 1 or 0 only two values let us go further now we will find upper sum upf do you know the formula of upf very simple formula summation i running from 1 to n capital mi delta xi so we know the value of capital mi which is 1 let us put it here let us see what will happen let me continue it here summation i running from 1 to n delta xi only since capital mi is 1 1 into delta xi delta xi let us expand the summation huh? let us see what will happen so which is equal to i am expanding the summation that means simply i will put i is equal to 1 i is equal to 2 i is equal to 3 and so on so we will have like this delta x1 plus delta x2 plus delta x3 plus and so on last term will be delta xn. What is value of delta x1? It is x1 minus x0 right. So this is x1 minus x0 delta x2 x2 minus x1 delta x3 x3 minus x2 and so on last term will be xn minus xn minus 1. Can we cancel any terms here? Yes definitely this x1 and minus x1 will get cancelled to each other. This x2 and minus x2 will get cancelled, x3 minus x3 will get cancelled, that minus xn minus 1 also will get cancelled. So what I want to say, just first and last terms will be there, remaining terms they will have opposite signs, so they will get cancelled to each other. So the final value will be last xn and this one first element x0. But you know that xn is nothing but b and x0 is nothing but a. So let me write here, b minus a. So in this way, we calculated the upper sum, which value is 
b minus a after that we should go for upper integral okay so make a screenshot of it then we will go further okay so this is upper integral okay whose definition is infimum of upf so the value of upf is b minus a let me write here so this is equal to infimum of b minus a and p is partition of closed interval a b so if you take any partition you will have the same value b minus a since it is constant getting and we are finding its infimum lowest value but see it is a constant no so that's why its infimum will be same b minus a so which is equal to b minus a so in this way we can say the value of upper integral is b minus a now we have to work on lower integral so st to start to find the value of lower integral we have to write first small mi okay let us write so now small mi its definition is uh, infimum of let me write here infimum of f of x right where x lies in xi minus 1 and xi okay for i running from 1 to n for each i we have to find the value of we have to find the infimum value it means in each sub interval we find the minimum value infimum value and that is nothing but small mi but as you know function has only two values either 0 or 1 in each sub interval both values are there 0 and 1 so we want minimum value infimum value so the minimum value will be 0 so that's why its infimum will be 0 and this is true for all i running from 1 to n okay after that we'll go for lower sum let us do so now lower sum okay are you familiar with that lower sum lpf the definition of lower sum is summation i running from 1 to n small mi delta xi so now we have to put the values but see small mi is equal to 0 we have got if i put 0 here 0 into anything 0 so that's why if you take summation again you will have 0 a very simple value we have got lpf okay which is 0 now i will go for lower integral lf which is nothing but supremum of lpf okay supremum of lpf p is partition of closed interval a b let me write partition of closed interval a b what we are doing we are taking supremum value of lpf lower sum where p is any partition of closed interval a b but see what we have got value of lower sum is zero for every partition okay of closed interval a b so that's why their supremum will be also zero since each lpf is zero see what we have got lf lower integral is zero and what is value of upper integral b minus a actually a is not equal to b okay since we have considered interval a is not equal to b so that's why a minus b or b minus a cannot be zero so therefore lpf and upf both have the different values okay both of them are not equal so that's why we say function is not riemann integrable okay so there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we'll go further so I have written the conclusion here, upper integral is not equal to lower integral. So therefore, function is not Riemann integrable on closed interval AB. Thank you.